All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. And as always, welcome to my YouTube channel. And the last video I recorded, I don't know about the order when these are going to be coming out, but uh, I showed you guys how you could quickly set up some base palettes and copy them from one page to the next and uh, using uh, mask layers and those sort of things. So if you're, if you're not familiar with using mask at all, then uh, be sure to check uh, my channel for a, a video where I talk about that. But um, it's called uh, a very different coloring method. But uh, in this video today, I'm just going to be working on these pages. I don't really have a plan of anything to talk about, so this is going to be one of those sort of watch me work sort of uh, sort of videos. So um, I'm just going to get started, and if I come across things that I think are interesting or a little out of the ordinary or something that I think might uh, be beneficial for you to understand, then I will tell you about it. But uh, Otherwise, you'll hear me uh, clicking away on my tablet here for most of this. So, <laughs> and at least initially, I I like to have the uh, the other page up so that I can kind of just get an idea of how things look. I won't keep it up there the entire time, but um, to start off with. It just sort of reminds me of, of kind of what I did and some of the stuff that I didn't copy over and whatnot. So, uh, um, and one thing that I've started doing recently is uh, going in and selecting all of my color holds first. Um, and I was talking to uh, the colorist uh, Dave McCaig about this. And he said he does that does that too lately. And um, I think what it does, at least for me, and color holds, if you if you are not aware, are, are the, the changing the color of of the lines themselves. Um, I've got an action that I run that just does it. Um, basically, um, it's there's a lot of ways to make them, um, but uh, this is a method someone taught me a while back, and so I just recorded all the steps and. You click a button and it fixes it. <laughs> so, uh, but um, so like in this case, the color of all of these trees, I'm going to copy all that over. But um, but I think what it does is it it sort of instantly creates depth that you may not have to use rendering then to um, to do. So it's um. It's kind of a it's kind of a shortcut, uh, I guess you could say it's a shortcut to because if you can create enough depth with in the color holds or at least uh, get yourself in the right direction with the color holds, then it's one less thing you have to worry about, you know, painting or rendering that kind of thing. So. I'm just kind of checking the entire page for things that I want to change the color of. Just realize that my my texture layer doesn't f really cover the entire image. Uh, let's see. There you go. You guys probably can't even see that, but I could see it in the corners. Uh, and uh, if you watch my videos, you know I used the lasso a lot, and uh, and I'm actually. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to get to do a a project that is colored in a very lassoy kind of style of a cut and grad you know kind of traditional comic book coloring uh, styles um, because uh, a lot of the stuff that I've worked on lately has been uh, very flat or or 
uh, yeah, pretty flat for the most part. Um, and that's not a bad thing, of course, just a coloring style. But um, like Glitter Bomb, for example, is is you know it's it's pretty flat. Um, I mean, there's there's some rendering in there, but it's very simple, and it kind of worked uh, with the uh, the line art um, that uh, Jabril did. But um, uh, same thing with uh, Yakuza Demon Killers. Um, it was a very uh, kind of a textured but still very flat book um, for the most part. Um, not a lot of, not a ton of rendering or painting. Um, postal I'm also doing, and there's more rendering in Postal, but still not quite as much. It's a it's a very moody kind of book, and um, so there's a lot of uh, it's very simple palettes, and there's very little local color uh, in those books. Uh, I mean. Uh, every page has a every scene has a pretty strong uh, uh, scheme, you know. And um, but it works well for that story. Um, it's kind of interesting. I, I think that's it's one of the reasons that uh, I've I've been able to keep pretty steady work lately because because of that style, though. I think I think. Uh, I think there's been sort of a revolt <laughs> against like super rendered, um, you know, comics. Now there are exceptions to that, of course. There's there's amazing colorists doing uh, wonderful things. I always talk about Justin Ponzer a lot. You know, he's it just blows my mind the the time he puts into pages and Tamara Bond villain and I'm like wayward. She just paints the hell out of everything and it's amazing. But um, and and it and it works really well in those sort of books, but. Um, I think there is a little bit of a of a of a shift to you know colors. People are realizing. I think more editors maybe are starting to realize that colors just don't have to be super fancy to work on on certain types of line art anyway. Um, and again, that is definitely not a judgment against anyone uh, against any of those guys. I've I've met both of them and they're uh, amazing people and amazing colors. But um, but I think it's one of those things where. You know, people realize simple works too, you know, and on certain types of line art, especially line art like this, it's very kind of cartoony and that kind of thing, then, um, then yeah, it um, works pretty well. But I think that's, I've had a lot of people approaching me lately because of that. Um, so that's been, that's been kind of neat. And, and I just realized the, the, the skin color on this page is not affected by that blue color at all. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the reason for that is, um, you know, every, most everything in the background is very cool um, in, in color, I mean. So there's... Um, uh, it creates you know, an opportunity to to create some contrast there if you've got a uh, a, a warm colored character it, it just instantly even when the colors are flat here he definitely stands out on the page as being pretty much the only warm thing on the page um, other than the background those are just a really really uh, it's a very cool yellow it's it's uh, not very warm so um, same thing with his shirt actually All right, let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and drop some textures in here for the uh, in the background. And these are just uh, these are some textures actually Rob provided, um, which was awesome. They're really cool textures. I can't share them with you, unfortunately. <laughs> he painted them himself. I'm pretty sure uh, this with the watercolor, I think. Uh, but I'm just going to be doing this in uh, in the backgrounds. And I'm just kind of shifting around uh, how I want that to fit. 
on the page. Then I can just select the background parts. I'm doing this first panel first. That. And then just hit the mask button to block that off and it only puts that texture then. In the background I can set the mode to overlay and then I can play around with the, the color of the texture itself or I can colorize it or uh, whatever I want to do here. Again, I, I want to sort of match this up to the previous page and get it in the ballpark, and that's that's pretty close. So. Just looking at some of these textures to see if what I want to use here. But if you want good textures, there's a ton of free, you know, uh, even for commercial use type uh, um, textures that are. Um, like on DeviantArt has has a lot, and just make sure, like I said, if you're going to use it, make sure that you are uh, following the instructions provided uh, by the people that are uh, making these things. So, um, if um, if they want to be credited a certain way, or if they require credit at all, or whatever the situation might be. So, um, and there's some textures that you know they want you to if they're. Uh, if they tell you they don't want you using it for commercial use, then don't make a comic with it. <laughs> I realize it's crazy that I have to say that, but if you, if you don't, then somebody is going to try to. And I'm setting these to uh, overlay, and then I'm just playing with the opacity. Um, I want to keep it pretty subtle. And I probably, I don't think I want this blue affecting these two guys he's talking to in the script quite as much. So, um, easy to fix that. Um, I can go in and just select all of the, uh, all the colors of these guys, just selecting everything. And then just check to see that I've not selected anything else. Let's see, like all the teeth and eyes, it looks like got selected, so I'm getting rid of those. Just 
So once I'm done, I just want those guys selected. And sometimes to, to test this, you can just hit Q, which is a quick mask, and it'll show you um, what you've got selected. And so I'm gonna go to that blue, and I'm gonna get, this is like a, just a 50% opacity brush, and just paint a little bit of that out. And these guys are kind of supposed to be dicks. And so um, I want to separate them from the background. Again, every, all the other characters and uh, you know get rid of the blue so, so that they don't uh, blend in um, with that. Like the blue jacket. Like I said, he's supposed to be... Uh, He's not a villain, but he's just, again, kind of being a pain. So, um, we'll make his color different. I'm just going back to my flats layer and just changing the underlying colors. So I really haven't started even, I haven't really rendered anything yet. So yeah, so now those guys kind of stand out from the background a bit. And I think I'm even going to, I did this on the last page, do some, uh, change the color of the lines on the other people in the scene, which pushes them back again even further from the main characters, because uh, that's kind of your job <laughs> as a colorist, to make the important things show up more on the page make them uh, pop I hate that term <laughs> I hate the cliche make it pop uh, but uh, yeah that's that's what you're doing we want them to pop off the page separate from everybody else so and if you follow the channel you also know that I've got a new, um, or new to me anyway, or, or yeah, it's, well, it's new, uh, uh, Wacom tablet, the new Mobile Studio Pro, but Wacom still hasn't put out the, hasn't uh, released the Wacom link, which allows you to use it on a desktop as a standard Cintiq, you know, and, um, so I really can't use it to record right now. Um, I've been working a lot on it, but when I want to record something, I've got to go back to my trusty Wacom Intuos 2 
which is now like 14, 15 years old at this point. Uh, somehow I have to, uh, didn't really get all those selections. Mess that up. Sometimes what I'll do when I'm doing this, uh, creating selections like this, is I'll just, to prevent what I just did, which is having to reselect them again, is I'll just fill it with a color on top. It doesn't really matter. Just use it as a selection. Um, again, some Photoshop guru is going to tell me that's the dumb way to do that, but I don't know a better way. But if I lose the selection or accidentally unselect my selection, then this allows me to go back and get it very quickly. And I just did that on a separate layer. So I'm basically just getting all of the background characters. And, and this is another good example of why when, you know, if, you, if you've emailed me or you've commented or um, even for students in my course that, you know, don't always, <laughs> don't always listen. I don't mean that in a bad way. But uh, when people ask for critiques on their work and they're really asking for critiques on their rendering, because it, maybe it's just a pinup, or maybe it's a cover. It's hard to tell, you know, what. Um, it's hard to tell anything about it, and so I can't really say a whole lot about, you know, a um, a pinup or a cover. This page is a great example of how much work we've done so far, how much work I've done so far, setting up different storytelling elements and separating planes and foreground from background and all this cool stuff that's going to make the page work and I haven't rendered anything yet <laughs> like at all uh, Now I will in a second and it's important and you've got to know how to do it but uh, at the same time it's it's not more important than what I'm doing right now because what I'm setting up now is what's going to determine whether or not this page works or not and I, I've said this before in a lot of videos it doesn't matter how well you can render uh, if you can't help tell the story then, uh, you know, you're missing the point. When I talk about separating planes, I mean, not planes as in airplanes, but planes as in foreground, mid, you know, middle ground, background, that kind of thing. Um, so again, we've got a lot of separation here on all these elements without having to render anything at this point. I talk about a lot of the same stuff in these videos, uh, you know, but I keep harping on it because it keeps being a problem. <laughs> it keeps being a really consistent problem for a lot of new uh, beginner colorists. Uh, I've been, I've, I'll, I say all the time, I, I was, I was as guilty as anybody of not really understanding what a colorist's job was when I first started coloring. Uh, I thought the same thing. Oh, I just make everything pretty, right? Make it stay in the lines and you know and you're good and yeah, doesn't really work that way all right so I've got all of my I don't like this hard line back here in the background I'm gonna put all of this in a group so I can quickly turn it off and on to get to my base colors down here and I'm just gonna soften this up a bit I didn't like that hard edge there oh what I have to go back and also let's see where is that I gotta paint this out on that blue layer that's kind of impacting that. Yeah, I just want to get rid of that hard line there. There we go. All 
All right, so I'm, I think I'm ready to start actually doing some rendering here. So um, I'm still going to, I still like to start with backgrounds. Um, I like to just get them out of the way. Um, for this, it's going to be pretty simple. Just selected all of the background. And I'm going to create some shadows underneath these guys. And I'm not really overthinking the shadows this much. Uh, you don't want to do anything too distracting with them. So, so yeah, I like to keep it simple. I think I'm, <laughs> that's a common, very common theme. I think it's keep it simple. Uh, really, not much in the background happening here. I'm just doing a very subtle gradient over the background just to make it a little bit more interesting. And for uh, you know, for different background elements, they're um, obviously I'm not going to do as much rendering in the background as I would in the characters in the foreground. I say obviously, I guess it's not obvious to everybody, but yeah, um, there you want to keep that stuff simple. Now this layer, the what I'm actually going to render on is I'm going to render on the mask on this layer, which is um, says it's set to screen mode. I thought it was hard light. Actually, it's oh the brush is screen. That's what it is. This is actually just a normal layer. Yeah. I'm just going to go around the uh, background people here just making some really quick selections because like I said it's they're they're important obviously to I mean they're they're important to the page but they're not so important that you want to spend a ton of time working on it My lasso will cooperate. And even in this panel, you'll you'll notice that I'm I want to create a little bit more contrast on these guys than uh, than the rest of the page, just or the rest of that panel, just so um, just so I mean he's gonna be walking toward him. Those are the two guys he's gonna be talking to. So 
they're in the corner of the panel. I don't want you mixing them up with everybody else there. And it helps that they're not really affected by that blue as much. Sorry if this isn't the most uh, interesting part. <laughs> you know how to how to choose um, where to render is something that just takes a lot of practice, and I don't think there's any shortcuts for that. You know, you've got to know, you got to go to your anatomy. You, you you've got to know, um, you got to know a lot about about light and shadow and um, all those sort of things. So, um, it helps, you know, people don't always, people that don't know any better don't always think of colorists as, as artists, but you, you definitely have to, you have to understand a lot about art. Um, and I don't, I don't mean that in a, uh, I'm not saying that to talk myself up or anything, I'm not saying me, but just in general, um, it helps to uh, understand form and all those different things. It's not just about, you know, like I said, it's not just about staying in the lines and. <clears throat> Since he's sort of close to that color uh, of the uh, guy's jacket, obviously uh, I don't I don't want those things blending together. So um, I can use a different color here to separate that. So now I'm going to start working on the main main characters, and for this, uh, there's obviously I'm going to be spending more uh, more time in these sections because this is what's going to uh, 
everyone's going to be drawn to these areas, so if you want to spend a little more time on those, then I'll be a little bit more um, exact in the uh, the rendering on these. Oh, I forgot to mention how I'm actually going outside the lines on this. I can go back to my colors layer and make sure these little overlapping intersecting boxes are checked. I think it's called intersect with selection. Yeah, that's what that's called. I did a video on that too a while back. Um, when you select the middle then, it actually gets rid of everything else um, with the magic wand. So it's a pretty neat little trick there. And there's other ways you can do that. I also will sometimes um, go back to um, uh, just my usual method, which is just to use, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, lock the transparency of the layer. So like if I just select his face, and um, but that's if I'm uh, you know painting on it, which I'm not in this case, I'm painting on a mask. But in, in that way, you can also um, avoid, you know, coloring outside the lines because it's, uh, it's copied to a new layer by itself and the transparency is locked. So that's uh, another method. There's a video I did on that. <laughs> it's done a lot of videos uh, called the selection trick, I think is the name of it. Um, And Rob's style is really interesting to color. There's, uh, you know, his there's there's parts of it that have kind of realistic elements, and then there's others, other places where he just it's super cartoony and exaggerated, and, and I just I, it's a really cool style to work on. Uh, it takes a little getting used to, but <laughs> uh, figuring out what you know what works and what doesn't work. And I kind of in intentionally avoided his I mean I've, I've read Chew it's it's been a it's been a while but um, I didn't look at any of it when he when when he first started because I knew he wanted something different and I didn't really want that to 
paint my perception of, of what uh, I was going to be doing. And, uh, and it was, uh, you know, at the beginning, it's interesting because, you know, Rob's colored himself for a billion issues of Chew and uh, I think everything else he's ever done. So, um, it, uh, it kind of created, a uh, for me anyway, I was a little stressed out about, uh, at first anyway, um, because he's so used to seeing himself colored, of course, kind of a certain way. Um, and, uh, you know, so now you got a new guy doing it. Um, <laughs> how does that, how does that work out? You know? So, um, but it's been, it's been cool and very, uh, you know, a few tweaks here and there. And that's, I'm happy with that. And I've never worked for Oni before either. So that was another, uh, you know, editorial there. You're always like, oh, well, what are they going to say? It's, it's, uh, it's a new publisher. It's a new artist I'm working with, you know, are they going to hate it? Are they going to love it? Like, what are they going to, what's going on? You know? But uh, they uh, they've they've dug it so far. Had high praise, so always happy about that. And Rob's style, obviously, is 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 highly stylized. Uh, so, um, you know, the rendering kind of matches. <laughs> it's not super realistic. Uh, it just sort of uh, it's very it's quirky, which uh, you know it's it's a lot of fun.
OBS just crashed my recording software, so um, uh, we lost a little bit. I don't think we lost much, though. I did pretty good on the first few, uh, <laughs> I don't know, first 45 minutes of yapping in this video, and now I've run out of things to talk about.
All right, all we've got left is the main character on a couple of these panels, and that is it. So on this one, I'm just gonna I want to I want to darken him again, so you kind of look past him to those guys. Um, I've already got this color set up, so let's use that again. And I'm really not gonna do any rendering on that and see because it really uh, want to again I have to look past it, keep it simple, so. We'll see if that works. And the lighting here on him is a bit of a cheat because, you know, the sun's out. It's pretty much midday, I think. But um, I want you to, I want there to be more contrast in his face uh, separate from the sky in the back. And so lighting it like that uh, makes more sense to me than the way I lighted those guys in the background.
I'm going to use a different color for this because he's sort of rattling off this all these questions in the script for um, these guys. And uh, so I'll make a new uh, color layer on top of all that. And I like what I guess there. <laughs> one of those accidents. I figured I would have to choose it and then figure out, you know, what color I want to use, but uh, I kind of like it where it is. <clears throat> All right, is that the last thing on this page? I need to color that the tip jar. It was, it was white, I believe, on the last one. All right, well, if it's not done, it's pretty close to done. Uh, uh, let me go in and do something in here. No, don't like that. I don't know if I like that or not. I think I like it flat or flatter. All right. Well, Hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you enjoy this book when it comes out. And uh, if you want to learn more about all this stuff step by step, I do have a, a 10 hour coloring course in the description. It's huge. And uh, it goes into all the details and how all this stuff works. And um, so make sure you check that out. I've got Patreon down there. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. You guys know what to do. So, <laughs> all right. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.